Hello, Nuggets. Medal of Honor. Okay. So, uh, I put um, a post up on Facebook last year saying, oh, by the way, I have a YouTube channel. Um, just to get more viewers because I thought I was going to get into this. And I don't know. I just, I just did. Right? And so, I got a few subscribers. A few people watched. One of them was a guy called Kurt. Kurt Margano. Marganow? Margano. Um, that I used to work with the Naughty Dog. Very smart guy. Intimidatingly smart, if you're watching, Kurt. <laughs> and he's like, I think he's like the lead designer there now. I mean, if he's not now, he's going to be. He's very, very capable. Um, got a degree in engineering, in coding. <laughs> That's such a simplistic way to say it. I don't actually know what it is. But he's very smart. He can script easily. He's a, I think he was a technical scripter, what they call a technical scripter there. But I think he is the lead designer on The Last of Us 2. Maybe. Or was. I don't know. Anyway. Um, he said I should do more stuff about gaming. And um, I wasn't going to. But then I thought uh, I mentioned Medal of Honor in a video I just made. So I'm like, all right, let's tell the Medal of Honor story. Okay, so I went to EA. Um, hope all is well, Kurt. Um, I went to EA. It was the best paid job I've ever had in this industry. They paid a lot of money at EA. It was also the worst job I've ever had. Uh, it was a nightmare. It was a nightmare. I did it after Naughty Dog. So uh, I left Naughty Dog because I just didn't fit in there. And I was my mother was really sick with her Alzheimer's. And I wanted to spend some time with her. And you work hard at Naughty Dog. You work hard everywhere, right? But they crunch very hard at Naughty Dog. Um, and it's a highly competitive company. Because it's filled with the best in the industry, I was amazed they gave me a job, right? But because it was filled with the best in the industry, it, there's, there's a lot of one-upmanship. It's not mean, it's not mean-spirited. I don't want to give that impression. But there's competition there. And I felt stressed all the time. And my mother was sick. And I just, I couldn't quite put the focus that was required to maintain the standard. I know I have it in me, and I know I could have absolutely soared there, but I just couldn't at that time in my life. So I ended up leaving. And in fact, the person, the HR rep that I went to see, I can't remember her name now, um, said, you know, you don't have to quit. You can take like a leave of absence, you know, an unpaid leave, basically. You just sign off for a year. But in hindsight, I probably should have taken that, but I didn't. Instead, what I did was I'm like, no, I got to go. I'm sorry, I got to go look after my mum. These are the limited time I have. As it turns out, it was a good decision. I did. It was a limited time. And um, she's still around my mum, but she's catatonic now. Um, so I ended up leaving. I'm rambling. So I ended up leaving. Um, and then after that, I... Wait, was this before that or after that? Shit. Now I can't remember. Anyway... I went to Medal of Honor. I went to EA. It was a company called Danger Close Games. They were in the EA building that's down in Playa del Rey. It's in Playa Vista, actually, near Playa del Rey. Um, Danger Close is gone now, right? But I went to the game. They had just released a Medal of Honor called Warfighter that was okay. It was pretty popular. Um, they made it on the Unreal Engine. And they had switched endings at the beginning of the project, which kind of threw everyone off. But they got back on the horse. I think actually this is the story where a group of engineers and, and scripters and designers and probably artists came in and over the weekend transferred the project they had onto Unreal to prove they could do it because they wanted to use that so much. And then the management came in or the executives came in and said, okay, yeah, we'll switch. We'll use Unreal. So they moved over to Unreal and Warfighter was made on the Unreal engine. Uh, and it was pretty successful. I think it did okay. It wasn't a superb game but it was there was a lot of effort and love in the game and the story is very important to the executive producer um who's very knows a lot of people in that world in the seal um in the army in the military rather um seals aren't army in the military it was very important to them there was a lot of passion in it and they got another contract to make the next one the next medal of honor and they were hiring and they hired me they almost hired my friend jeremy but i think jeremy turned them down um, I think actually Jeremy's the one they really wanted and I kind of came along as a package deal and he said no and they already offered me the job. <laughs> so I went in as, uh, was I lead designer on that? I don't know. In the end it didn't matter but I believe I was lead designer on that. Um, 
I knew the creative director, Rich Farrelly, lovely guy I used to work with, um, who got screwed over a couple of times by the industry. That's a different story. But um, he's now at Infinity Ward. Um, so uh, I knew some people there, right? And a couple of other people that were working there I knew. So I went and I got the job. We had a two-year project. Uh, we did lots of prototyping for the new job. We were going to do like all of these systems for how to breach a room. We had a whole gameplay system set up for breaching a room. Uh, we had campaign structure sorted out. We had a separate MP team. But, um, it, it, you know, the excitement was high because people were also really comfortable with Unreal. They were like, okay, we know Unreal now. We spent all this time with the crappy engine. We moved it over to Unreal. They agreed. Now we know Unreal. This one's going to sing. So we did all of this prototyping, all of this work, and then they told us we can't use the Unreal Engine, we have to use the Frostbite Engine, which I don't know if they're still using it, but at the time it was DICE, uh, the company called DICE, it was their engine, and I believe they're probably still using it because that's their in-house engine. DICE made this for racing games and stuff like that, and it's a good engine, but it fucked the Medal of Honor team because <laughs> we, we spent all of this time prototyping, and now we had to go through and spend six months learning a new engine it was exhausting so we put some of the team on tutorial stuff and learning the engine so we could help everyone and it wasn't quite ready the engine and it was just chaos right so we transferred over to that which was a very frustrating decision and one which i put and a lot of people did but i also put a lot of pressure on the executive producer to deny and i think he fought for us uh, greg and um but in the end, he couldn't win. You know, they were just, no, we're move, you're moving to Frostbite. Deal with it. This is your new engine. So we ended up going over to that and it put us back many months. But what happened during the course of that game was that slowly but surely, all of the power I had was removed from me. And it was a very weird, there were a lot of reasons for it, right? One was that the executive producer, Greg, and now I look back on it, I have a slightly different opinion about it. But one of the reasons was that Greg, the executive producer, was under an enormous amount of pressure, not just to keep the company running and produce a flagship project, because at the time, Medal of Honor meant something, now it's dead, right? But not just to produce a flagship project for EA, and they really needed a big project, right, to, to combat Call of Duty. Um, but also because it was very important to him. He had some very close friends who were SEALs, very, as I said, very close to the military. Like, he found out, he was one of the first people to find out about um, Osama bin Laden being killed, right? Like, I probably shouldn't say that, but, you know, he, he knew a lot of stuff. He, he was very, very entrenched. And we met a lot of the SEALs. They were all good friends of his. Um, but he was so attached to it that he started to make decisions which were a little out of his depth to be honest with you he started to decide what the story should be he decided to decide what the design should be the campaign structure how the story should be told um he was had his hands in absolutely everything um and it started to go wrong very quickly uh we would have leads meetings where we'd all get together and i remember specifically in one meeting telling the other directors that letting Greg run things, letting him run things was really bad, not just bad for the game, but also because he's going to get fired. Because it was, anyone could come in and look at the game and go, what are you doing? This is a mess, right? And it was our job not to be yes men, and he was surrounded by yes men. Not all bad people, I don't want to give that, and some of them watching this, not bad people, but just saying yes to him, and I think accepting that you know well he's the executive producer what he says goes but he was f leading him down a really bad path which in the end he got fired you know and i didn't want to be one of those guys that just said yes and did what he wanted while you know collecting my paycheck collect my paycheck i'm getting paid it's all right it's a good job and you're fired i didn't want to be one of those guys so i mentioned at a director's meeting or a lead designer lead meeting whatever it was the leads i think no one did anything about it to the point where I ended up not being invited to those meetings. And I was actually okay with that at one point. I was like, yeah, it's all right. This, I'm not going to be here very long anyway, so it's okay. I can move on. Um, the creative director was a good friend of his um, uh, on that project, was a good friend of the executive producer. 
wasn't comfortable with what was happening, but also felt a little powerless. Like, you know, just, you know, he got thrown under the bus. He got fired because of the quality of the game, even though he didn't get to make any decisions. The executive producer made all of the decisions. So it all ended up being an absolute clusterfuck, that game, to the point where they ended up bringing in a team of um, designers. I can't remember the project they were from, but they were dice people who came in and took over the project my dog they came in and they took over the project um to try and fix it in the last three months so they would have meetings about the design and call me in to say like what was the point of this design why did you do it this way and i had to say i didn't that's not my design i can show you the design papers i can show you what the team did because the team were really excited when i came on board not for me but just because they felt they had power they were like great let's design our own game you know and I could help facilitate them doing that because there were some wonderful designers there. But they would call me in and say, you know, what's the point of this? Why is this here? And I'm like, sorry, can't tell you. Didn't make that decision. Why is this breach mechanic this way? It's not supposed to be that way. That's just the way it ended up being, you know. Our executive producer decided it should be that way. So the end result was they took over the game. It was terrible. The game ended up really bad and they probably did a good job considering the amount of time they had and I left the company. I had a producer there, um, not the lead producer, not the executive producer, just like an associate producer or a producer. I don't know what their names are at EA, they have titles for everything. But he was very undermining, he made my life very difficult. Um, and he was a bit nefarious, I didn't realise that at the time but he was actually playing a political game, I think he probably still does it, um, who just kind of pulled the rug out of me if, under me from a few times. If he didn't like what we were doing, he decided, you know what, I'm just not going to have the team do that. I'm going to have the team do something else. And he was my producer. He was supposed to be the guy facilitating what I wanted done. But if he didn't agree with it, he would just not get it done. And I'd be like, what are you doing, dude? At one point, fuck, I'm going to try and remember this. At one point, we had a meeting. He'd done something. He'd redirected the team onto something, my design team. And I'm like, dude, why did you do that? You didn't tell me you were doing that. He went, I didn't think it would, I'm paraphrasing here. But he said, I didn't think it was important. It was more important I put them on this. And I said, dude, you can't do that. You're an asshole. <laughs> Which I shouldn't have said. But he then went to the lead producer or whatever and complained. And the lead producer called me in and said, did you call his guy an asshole? And I said, yeah, he was being an asshole. <laughs> I got told off for that. And I think it was at that point I realized, oh, this EA is just a clusterfuck. It's just a mess of politics. And there's no, the structure is more important than the product, right? It was bloated. It's a bloated company. It needed restructuring, which it now has been. And I think the people who work at Dice LA, who were all the people at that company, are really happy. I believe. I mean, I see they seem to be happy. Um, but the time I was there, I was there during the, the fall of Rome, right? So the whole thing went to shit very quickly. Uh, I was barely there. I would come in in the morning and just sit at my desk and just stare at the screen. I'd go, the designers thought I was still their lead designer, so I'd go to meetings. And I got a bit petulant about it. In the end, I would say, like, well, don't ask me. Go ask the person who makes all the decisions. I can't. You're asking me what we should do next. And unfortunately, it doesn't matter what I say because you have to go check my decision with the executive producer and the executive producer will say, no, I don't want to do that. I want to do this. So it was kind of irrelevant me being there as a lead designer, um, which is a shame because we had some really good design ideas for that game. The breach mechanic was going to be fucking awesome, you know, and the team came up with that anyway. So that went to hell. I ended up leaving there and going somewhere else. I can't remember if it was Naughty Dog or if it was before or afterwards. It really shook my confidence, though. And it really shook my confidence. A lot of it was because I got played by that producer. And I just, I was so innocent before then. I just didn't think people did that. I didn't think people deliberately went out of their way to screw you over. And it was weird because, I don't know. I don't know whether it was me. I don't know whether that was just his manner. I don't think it was me. I think it was his manner, the way he liked to do things. But it shook my confidence and I lost a bit of trust. I'm like, mm, I don't know. And designers in general in our industry are very cautious around producers. 
They're not crazy about them. They're not the most popular bunch. Because usually producers are the ones who have to deliver the shitty message, right? They're the ones who have to say, no, you've got to work late, or no, we've got to redo it, and, and here's the schedule, and no, you don't have the resources to do that. The producers deliver all the crappy messages, right? But I'd never felt really any angst against them. I have a hard job, right? And then I had this guy who was playing me, who was playing politics, who was trying to work his way up the ladder at the expense of whatever, you know? Um, and that whatever turned out to be me. Um, so that made it worse. With that on top of the fact that there was an executive producer who wouldn't let anyone make any decisions, everything had to go through him. He had a good writer there as well, Mike. I can't remember his name now. We had a really good writer there as well who had really lots of great ideas. Couldn't exercise those ideas. Um, anyway, that executive producer has now gone on to, ru to run a company. I can't remember. Is it Sucker Punch he runs? I don't know, but it's a very successful company. Think. Well, they're doing well anyway. He seems to be doing well in the industry. So it didn't ruin him. It didn't destroy him, which is what I thought it was going to do, which is one of the reasons why I, I said, you know, we can't be a yes man. This is this guy's career. He's got kids. We're watching it, the ship burn and going down with it and not telling him the ship's on fire. But as it turns out, it was on fire. He did get burned, but he moved on to something that's bigger and better. And I think he's now runs a company with a few of the people he used to work with. So obviously not everyone had the opinion I had of him. Um, and he's doing well. So, yeah, that's the middle of the story. The game came out, was hated, and it pretty much destroyed the franchise. Um, most stressful, worst job I've ever had. There you go, it's middle of honor. I know I've lost a lot, missed a lot of stuff, but I'm a bit, no, I don't want to upset anyone. So if you're watching this, I apologize if I did, but that was it from my perspective. I'd love to hear yours. Bye.